Greetings, Lux lovers. Welcome or welcome back. I want you to live your best Lux life knowing that you've made the best purchasing decisions possible. So if that sounds good to you, please consider subscribing and stay a while. Today I'll be sharing my own tips on how I afford luxury. I actually think it's an important discussion topic because I don't want you all to think that YouTubers like me are just spending willy nilly all the time. On this channel, I'm a firm believer in balance and I'd like to present a little behind the scenes for you to understand where I spend and where I save. I'll tag the original creators below who started this topic. So let's get started. So when it comes to affording luxury, there's really two sides to the coin and really two ways to afford anything. One is bringing in the money and two is preserving what you already have. So I'll start with the first one. For me, I kind of live by the 80-20 rule. And here, I won't get into specifics. Right now, I'm a full-time corporate employee with a salary job in the data and analytics space. And yes, this space is pretty trendy right now. But I'd say that this speaks for about 80% of the way that I can afford luxury. If you follow financial gurus like Dave Ramsey, for example, he always talks about having a big shovel. So that means rather than saving pennies, having a big shovel to bring in more money, basically. And understanding your own circumstances when it comes to income, I think is one of the biggest factors for many of us in regular jobs. And you might have a job and you might have a side hustle, but for me, it's really just my corporate job. And let me know in the comments if you're interested in a getting to know me video. And if you'd wanna submit questions, I'm open to it, but I don't wanna push it on you guys. The next section will talk about preserving what I have. And really, this is more around the 20% of how I afford luxury. And I'll start with the most impactful. First off, I don't really drink alcohol much and I really haven't starting in college. To me, my body is just very sensitive to alcohol. So just drinking it never stuck. And I know that this has saved me so much money in college and beyond. Second, our travel and entertainment bucket is pretty low right now. Because we have two kids, we don't go on a whole lot of fancy vacations and we might go to a movie now and then. I guess really the only exception is that we have that big anniversary trip this year, but that's kind of out of the norm. We typically don't go to restaurants a whole lot, but we do order food in a fair amount. I personally love shopping at places like Trader Joe's and they're pretty affordable. And while I'm not a huge cooker, I can fix myself some meals without having to order out food all the time. I think people need to pick and choose where they spend and where they save. Again, all in the name of balance. And when I purchase from my non-luxury categories, like jeans, for example, I totally go budget. All of my jeans are from Target or Old Navy. And as you know, I've tried the expensive ones, such as the ones I tried in the Nordstrom anniversary sale recently, but they all just didn't work out. Also, all my kids' clothing is from Target, and I get some really great hand-me-downs from my neighbors. The next way I save is that I'm pretty much a sale shopper. And try as I might, I do genuinely try not to shop just because there's a sale, although we all know I've succumbed to that trigger. But instead, I like to shop sales where there are things I know that I want and that make sense given my shopping criteria. So what I'll do is I'll see something online and I will track it like a hound dog until it goes down on sale. And sometimes I even know that there might be a sale on sale. So I'll just have that tab open in my browser window and I'll keep checking it once in a while. And then sometimes I'll just pounce when I see it's at the right price. Another way I've been able to save big is I invested in better coffee at home. I'll share a clip of my fancy coffee machine here, but I do have to say it has made a big difference. I think this was a Mother's Day gift maybe last year. And ever since then, my coffee out of the house has dramatically gone down. This is the Breville Crista Nespresso machine. And I have to say Nespresso coffee to me is really great. And this machine gives me the ability to steam my own milk so that I can add it to my coffee and make lattes and stuff like that. So honestly, I don't even miss lattes from say Starbucks. I certainly am not going to win any awards for my latte art because it's terrible, but I mostly just like pour it in and call it a day. But honestly, it has made such a big difference. I even buy the Starbucks capsules for the Nespresso machine at Target and I will have two cups a day and save myself probably $8 in total a day on the coffee that I drink. I try not to be wasteful about the beauty products that I have and the skincare and the hair care, and I really do try to use every last drop. 
Buying in bulk is also a good idea so that you can really get those savings. And one thing I'll share with you is that, for example, I, I would buy a bulk item. Here is my Aveda Cherry Almond. This is the shampoo and I love this scent. So I know that this will last me probably a year. Um, and I bought this little doohickey off of Amazon, but as you can see, it's like, it will connect two bottles. So decanting from one bottle to the other is actually very easy. If you have a big bulk bottle, you put the larger one on this one, and then you put the bottle that you're filling, the normal size on the other size, and then you just flip it over. This might help certainly with things like conditioner that take a little longer, maybe a few hours to transfer from one bottle to the other, but at least I'm not there like squeezing. So I do recommend like little hack tricks like this to be able to decant this. And I would say maybe I do this once every couple of months, um, but really I just know that if I buy a bottle of this and a bottle of conditioner, I'm good for the year. Another really cool example of how I make my beauty products last, this is my La Mer the regenerating serum and again this bottle is about four hundred dollars but i'm able to use something you know really simple like this little spatula that will fit inside this bottle so that you just unscrew the top and you can literally just go in and scrape out from the bottom the little pieces and then i just would put it on my hand and then rub it into my face but it's the small things like this that will really help you get the last drop because the the pumps in these won't get all of that product on the side and that to me is gold. And lastly, I'm very intentional about what I purchase luxury wise. We just need to choose our own categories. I've, I've talked about this in the past. Like I said, some people are jeans people. I'm just not. Some people are watch people. I'm just not. But when it comes to handbags, look out, I will go all out. We can't buy all luxury all the time. So I know I keep harping on my luxury buying criteria, but it's true. Buying a new handbag for me at this point is actually a big deal. Often, if I see something that I'm trying on and I really surprisingly love it, I at least need 24 hours before purchasing. So I'll put that limit on myself before making a rash decision. But if I find that I'm still thinking about the item and it makes sense for my collection and it's affordable and I think I'll get a good cost per wear, then yes, I'll add it in. But it's just having these kind of systems and mechanisms in place to help stop me make decisions that I might regret later that also helps me afford luxury because at that point, if it passes all my criteria i know i'm good to go so thank you to those who've stayed with me to the end if you've enjoyed this video i invite you to go down the rabbit hole that is my luxury chit chat playlist and i'll put that here like it if you liked it and i'll see you in the next video bye